But once you've tasted a locally grown or locally raised product, like you can definitely tell the difference. So we are kind of a hybrid or a mix of a farm and a ranch. We raise Texas Longhorn cattle. We have raised pigs and sheep in the past. We have Nigerian dwarf goats for um, dairy, for milk. And then we have poultry of all sorts, uh, ducks, chickens, geese, turkeys, and a peahen. We try and regeneratively and sustainably manage our livestock in order to benefit our land primarily. So we're after more than just, you know, raising great livestock and tasty food and that kind of stuff. You know, we, we want a healthy community, right, from, from the soil all the way to the people that consume the product. I am the owner operator, along with my husband, of our farm, Heritage Bell Farms in Calhan, Colorado, just east of Colorado Springs, Colorado. In the very beginning of COVID, I started a virtual farmer's market, and so I've really gotten to be able to see what the challenges are for both myself and all my fellow farmers and ranchers as far as getting local food into the community and into the hands of local consumers. And the biggest issue that I see is that there's a lot of um, responsibility and weight on the farmers and the ranchers to do everything from growing and raising the crops and the livestock to transporting it to the centers to actually having to do farmers markets and try and market your products. So having an outlet that would allow us to kind of alleviate some of those demands helps us to focus on the things that we're really good at, like raising the, the crops and the livestock. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that the Rocky Mountain Food Collaborative has been evolving over time and we're still continuing. We intend to be set up as a for-profit cooperative with farmers, ranchers, and employees that work within the collaborative and the stores. And the project started, I would say, about two and a half years ago, if not more, just with loose conversations from different folks. If we can bring small to medium-sized producers together, they're going to have a collective voice that can actually start to make change. We tend to focus on sort of the big industrial voices and this gives small to medium sized producers an opportunity to join together, have a stronger voice and, and hopefully influence the way we look at markets, the way we look at policy, the way we work with in our communities. I'm owner, operator and manager of Raptor W Ranch in Simla, Colorado. Uh, we are a multi-species operation and that includes cattle, sheep and chickens for both meat and eggs uh, and we are uh, deeply invested in regenerative practice. If, if it's in your budget to do it, it makes more financial sense to order it in bulk if you have a big freezer or something like that because you, then you're not paying on select cuts across the year and, and that's part of the education. What, what makes more fiscal sense for, for your budget? So in Colorado, when does it grow? When is it harvested? If it's berries, when, do, when are they here, right? If it's pe peaches from Palisade, August to early September, and that's the time slot. And so in order to make this project financially viable so that farmers and ranchers earn what they need, we decided that we needed to have it in an area that there was enough wealth that they would be able to come in and financially support it. And then at the same time, we didn't want it to be in an area that that was the focus. Instead, we wanted to say, well, now that we have a location that can provide some of that, we want to be in a food desert. We wanted to be in an area where retail grocery stores are not willing to go. And we know there's the need and the desire and just the want for these healthy local foods and the ability to create this community endeavor too. So we're bridging the farmers and the ranchers with the employees that hopefully live in the neighborhood and work at the store. And so once again, just creating this bridge between rural and urban, knowing that the urban can help support the rural and vice versa. We're in Northeast Park Hill in the Northeast Holly Square, and there's a lot of history here, far more than I know or, or should speak about. You cannot visit or live in this neighborhood and not know what's going on and what's not here. So I watched this whole Holly complex be built, you know, um, listening to neighbors and friends talk about um, needing somewhere to uh, purchase food. I'm Alicia Boyd. I'm the Special Strategic Advisor to the Northeast Collaborative Team. 
And so I met this group through my son, Terrence Boy. He started ranching uh, the first part of the year. I've been attending King Baptist Church for 39 years. So being in this community, my daughter worked at the rec center across the street. Just watching it change and through gentrification. Our idea is that we could have a neighborhood public market that we can just kind of help start and then it could be owned by the community and provide economic opportunities, provide access to local food, and really just start to be a source of pride for the community. And with that, we then would like to have our cooperative owned grocery store, cut facility, butcher counter, and sandwich deli located next to it. You have to ask yourself, are you bringing value to this neighborhood or are you just bringing your vision to this neighborhood? We can go anywhere to start a, you know, this market, but this is a special neighborhood that uh, we care about and have passion for. We have a neighbor in Colorado terms south of us who has a substantial you know greenhouse vegetable operation and people found them right and and you know not only did they get it local but they got it at a higher quality right it hadn't been in a truck you know and those kinds of things hadn't been picked before it was ready and, and I can have a relationship with the person that's that's raising it and that helps us connect for us that's been tremendous I mean we've met some people we would have never otherwise met um, and some of them we've developed relationships, some have come to visit the ranch with their kids. And this neighborhood is not prepared for anything if it's shut down. And so it scares me and, and you know, to think that if the roads were blocked, where would they go for food? Um, I hope that this collaborative project is a mechanism to, be, to continue to build that community, right? And to build the, the healthy relationships that will build the things that come out of it.